Hey there, internet family. My name is Bradston Henry, and welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode in the creating a multiplayer game server using Unity 3D and Red Hat OpenShift. As always, I'm pumped to be here, and just like every other episode, this is gonna be a good one. Today, we're gonna focus primarily on deploying our multiplayer game server out into the cloud. Particularly, we're gonna be using Red Hat OpenShift to make that happen. It's gonna be one of the easier episodes that we have in this series. You're gonna learn a lot, but you're also gonna have a great time. It's kind of crazy if you think about it. We started this series not really knowing that much about multiplayer games and multiplayer game servers to now being able to actually deploy our own multiplayer game out into the cloud for anybody to really access it once we're ready to do that. But before we get into today's video, I want to ask y'all a very little favor. If you haven't already, please like this video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. I would really, really appreciate it. I love hearing from you guys. I love seeing you guys. And I really hope that you guys will stick around and learn and get more content from me. So enough of that. Let's go ahead and get into today's video and deploy our game server into Red Hat OpenShift. All right, so let's go ahead and kind of start from where we ended last time, where we, you know, finished creating our multiplayer game and we connected it to our local multiplayer game server. So if you remember in a part of our code within the multiplayer game, within our socket manager, we had this line of code here. It says socket equals new socket and our link, or I guess our URL to where we want to connect to our server. So today, basically what we're doing is creating a new link, a new URL to a remote server that's going to be hosted in Red Hat OpenShift. So let's go through the process of what it takes to make that happen and what we need to do to get our multiplayer game server working in Red Hat OpenShift live out on the internet. So I already have a few resources open for us to start working with. So let's go ahead and check them out. So the first thing I want to say before we get deep into things is that if you don't already have one, I really recommend that you go ahead and get a IBM Cloud account. So you can see here, I'm at cloud.ibm.com. This is where you can access the IBM Cloud resources and everything that we're gonna be doing today, particularly our Red Hat OpenShift cluster, where we're gonna be deploying our application will be in IBM Cloud. I'm gonna go ahead and attach a link in the description so you can go ahead and sign up for IBM Cloud for free. Uh, it's absolutely free, no cost, and you're able to access all of the different things that IBM Cloud has to offer and you can go from there. So the other thing that's really gonna be important is that we have access to a GitHub repo with our code. I'll be working off of the GitHub repo where I posted all the code from the last few episodes. Particularly, we'll be getting the game server code. If you already have your own GitHub repo, you don't have to follow along as I'm going ahead and connecting our GitHub in Red Hat OpenShift. You can always use your own, but I will add in the description a link to my GitHub so that you have an opportunity as well to follow along with exactly what I'm doing if you don't have access to GitHub. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're gonna do to get started for today is actually navigate to the Red Hat OpenShift on IBM Cloud Open Labs page. I'll go ahead and add the link in the description so you can easily navigate there. This is really gonna be where we're gonna be doing most of our work. As you can see here, it's developers.ibm.com slash open labs slash open shift. Basically what this allows you is the opportunity to use Red Hat OpenShift for free for a short limited period of time. What it allows you to do is get a chance to get to know Red Hat OpenShift intimately and get to know some of the tools and how it works a little bit better. One thing to note is we're going to have a limited amount of time in Red Hat OpenShift in this free cluster, but know that we're going to have plenty of time because literally what we're going to do is very, very fast and very, very quick. So what we're going to go ahead and do is scroll on down to the bottom of the Red Hat OpenShift IBM Labs page. And we're going to click this launch lab under the bring your own application section because we're going to be bringing our own application to Red Hat OpenShift. So go ahead and click launch lab. What's going to ask you to do is sign in. I'm already signed in, so it's just going to kind of quickly automate through this process. But if you haven't already signed up for IBM Cloud, if you already haven't done this, go ahead and take care of that. Once you're signed in and set up, you're going to get presented with this please wait provisioning lab. All you need to do once that's finished and it's asked you to launch lab, we don't have an opportunity ID, so just make sure that's selected no, and we we'll go ahead and click launch lab. Once we launch lab, it's going to go ahead and go through the process of setting up our lab and it'll take a few seconds. So, you know, just sit down, relax for a few seconds. And once it's finished, it's going to navigate us to a new page. All right, once it's finished loading us in, we're gonna be presented with this kind of landing page for uh, the bringing your own application to Red Hat OpenShift IBM Cloud. And this is kind of where we're gonna get started. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to this left side panel over here and we're going to go ahead and click quick links and common commands. This is because all we really want to do is get access to our Red Hat OpenShift cluster and we want to be able to start deploying our application into the cloud. So under quick links, what we're going to go ahead and click is the access the summary page OpenShift cluster on IBM Cloud Portal here. So go ahead and click this link. Once you do that, it'll open you up to a new page, which is our IBM Cloud links page. And what it's doing is going to be loading in some resources that we're going to be needing and using for today. All right, everything's all loaded up. As you can see, we're on our cluster. You'll see they have this kind of numerical uh, description for our cluster name. It'll be DTE in some other words. You also see that we're using kind of a shared cloud account for accessing our Red Hat OpenShift cluster. And you'll see information about our Red Hat OpenShift cluster here, ready to go and ready to use. Now, before we jump into Red Hat OpenShift cluster, I should probably note what Red Hat OpenShift is. Red Hat OpenShift is essentially a containerization orchestration platform. It allows you to easily and quickly deploy containerized applications into the cloud and allows you to easily monitor and manage any application you deploy into the cloud. It's great because it's a one-stop shop for anything that you need in regards to your application. And also it can be deployed on any cloud, not just IBM cloud. It could be on AWS, Azure, or any other cloud, your own private cloud. And it's a great option for anybody trying to deploy applications in general. All right, so let's go ahead and check out how to deploy our multiplayer game server into Red Hat OpenShift. So the first thing we're gonna want to do is we're gonna want to click on this OpenShift web console button here. Click it. Once we click it, it should begin opening up our OpenShift web console where we're gonna be doing most of our work for today. All right, once our Red Hat OpenShift web console is ready, we'll be presented with this main page. The only thing that really matters for us here is we need to go up to the top left and click this down carrot, and we need to click developer. By default, we're given the administrator perspective that allows us to administrate our Red Hat OpenShift cluster. But in this case, we're going to just work as developers as we deploy our application to Red Hat OpenShift. You can go ahead and close this welcome to dev perspective. If you want to, you can click get started to see the tour. But right now, that's not of importance to us. Now you'll see that we're on the topology page, but you'll see there's a lot of stuff going on here. The first thing we really need to do before we do anything else is we need to create a project. A project essentially is where we're going to house our code. It's going to house everything that we do. So we need to create a unique project to us so we can have our project specific code housed in a place that we can manage. So let's go ahead and click the create a project button. Once we click the create a project button, we'll be presented with a dialogue where we need to name our project. One thing to note, everything that we do needs to be lowercase for this name. So I'm just going to name our project multiplayer game server. All right. Once we've done that, we can really put anything we want here for our display name. So I'm just going to say game server and N slash A. The description really doesn't matter. I'm just putting something to fill the box. Let's go ahead and click create. Once our project is created, you'll see that now our topology view has changed a little bit. And now we have options on how we can deploy our application into Red Hat OpenShift. In our case, we're going to be using the from Git options. There's tons of other options. Check them out, get to know them. But in our case, we use from Git. So let's go ahead and click from Git. Essentially, what from Git does is it uses what's called source to image. It essentially grabs our code from our code repository and it builds that code and it deploys it into our Red Hat OpenShift cluster. So in our case, all we need to do is share our Git repo URL where our server code is and it'll build everything for us, no problem. All right, so in this first folder, we're gonna need to put in our Git repo URL. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop over to my Git repo. You can see I already have it. I'm gonna go ahead and copy it, copy. I'm gonna go back to our Git repo URL and I'm gonna paste it. One thing to note, is it has validated our GitHub URL, but because of how I have my Git repository set up, we're gonna to need to go to the show advanced Git options here at the bottom. So let's go ahead and click that. In our case, we're gonna be looking for our multiplayer game server code within our GitHub repo. In my case, we have a context directory, basically the subdirectory where this server is located. So let's go back to my GitHub code and you'll see I'm gonna to go to episode five and I'm gonna to go to multiplayer game server here. And you'll see that it has multiple subdirectories before it gets to our code. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy episode five, copy, go back to our code, paste it, paste it here. Then I'm gonna do a backslash, go back, 
I'm gonna go ahead and copy multiplayer game server, copy, go back, and I'm gonna paste it. And that's the subdirectory for where our code is. I'm gonna go ahead and press enter. In most cases, once we press enter, it'll automatically select our builder image. But in this case, let's go ahead and click Node.js since we know our server is in Node.js. As far as builder image version, let's go ahead and select the default because that will work perfectly for us. All right, so let's scroll down a little bit further. Here, we just need to put in our application name. In my case, I'm just gonna keep it as it is, creating a multiplayer game server app. And I'm just gonna go ahead and call this game-server. All right, once that's set up and we have the basic you know, information about our application, let's go ahead and set up the resources and advanced options. We're gonna leave this as default as deployment. We don't want deployment config, so make sure that says deployment. And under advanced options, make sure it says create a route to our application. If you don't have this selected, it will not create a URL that will be publicly accessible for us to use for our game. We're gonna need this URL in order to connect our game to our game server. So make sure that option is selected before you click create. All right, now we have everything set up. Let's go ahead and click the create button. Once we click the create button, essentially what's happening is Red Hat OpenShift is going to our GitHub repo, it's grabbing our code, and it's creating what's called a container image. Container image essentially is just a packaging that has all of the resources that we need to create our application, and it's putting it in more or less a defined box that we can easily use. This container image allows for our application to be deployed in a lot of different environments, as long as that environment is a containerized application environment, such as Red Hat OpenShift. Once it has an image, it goes ahead and deploys the application into Red Hat OpenShift and allows us to use it. All right, so now what's gonna happen, it's gonna go through the process of deploying our application into Red Hat OpenShift. It'll take a little bit of time, but we're gonna let that happen and let that process go through. So now you may have noticed that a green check mark has appeared near our little pod area that represents our game server. And that just means that our build is complete. Let's go ahead and click on the center of this pod and we'll get some details about our application. So let's first check to make sure that our application is running and that things are working appropriately. So let's go over here under this resources section where it says pods and select view logs. View logs will take us to a page where we get to actually see the debug logs that are happening for our server. And as you can see, the server has started and it's listening on 8080. So everything looks good. It looks just like when we deployed it and ran it on our local machine. So I think we're good to go. Let's go ahead and go back to the topology by clicking topology. Let's go ahead and select our pod here or our application. And now we're gonna look at this section that says routes. Now, routes is essentially the URL where our application is exposed and where we're gonna be connecting our game to our server. Let's go ahead and click this link just to see if it's running. As you may have noted, all it says is upgrade required. That means it's running because we're trying to use HTTP to connect to it. It's not gonna have anything other than upgrade required. So let's go ahead and close it. Awesome, now that we have our server up and running, let's go ahead and connect it to our game application. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and right click and I'm gonna go ahead and say copy link. So let's go ahead and go back to our application code, our game code. And in here, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight localhost 8080 and I'm gonna paste in our URL. One thing to note is to make sure to get rid of the HTTP and make sure that it says WS uh, in the beginning of our URL. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and save. And all we need to do now is run our game application and see it connecting to our game server. Let's go ahead and flip over to our game application. If you have not already, go ahead and open your uh, multiplayer game in Unity 3D's editor so that we can go ahead and test to see if our code now deployed out into the Red Hat OpenShift is working. So I'm gonna go ahead and check out our Unity editor. So as we've seen before, our game is just ready to be played. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is press play. When we press play, everything looks like it's working fine. We're able to move our object around our environment. And if we check out our console, you'll see that, hey, we have a player ID. That's a very good sign that our server is working out in Red Hat OpenShift and is sending us the information that we need. So let's go ahead and check to see if our Red Hat OpenShift game server is actually working by checking the logs that we looked at previously when we were checking to see if it had already been deployed. So let's go ahead and go back to our Red Hat OpenShift cluster. So once again, just make sure that you selected this pod and opened up our detail view. And what we're gonna do under the resources and pod section is click view logs. 
And if you look in view logs, we'll see that we are receiving position data live. That means that we're currently connected to our server. And if we want to just do a sanity check, what we can do is check our ID 9AB8, and we can go back to our game application. And you'll see that 9AB8 is exactly the same ID that we see within our game. So just like that, we've deployed our multiplayer game server to Red Hat OpenShift and we've connected it to our Uni 3D game. And now it's ready to actually be used by multiple users all over the world at the same time. This is huge and it's definitely a must if we really want to see our multiplayer game being used in the real world. And just like that, our multiplayer game is out there in the cloud using Red Hat OpenShift. And this is just the beginning of what we could do with our multiplayer game and our multiplayer game server. I'm very, very excited because in my last video, I said this would be the final video in our series. And I kind of thought about it for a while. I said, no, I want to go further. So I'm going to make some more videos in this series. Primarily, I'm going to be focusing about creating our multiplayer game and making it even better. I'm going to be spending more time in Unity, showing you a little bit more about how you can make your game feel more and more real and how you could even deploy your multiplayer game server in different environments. So look out for those videos because they're coming. I've already got them in the works and I'm excited to share them with you. Thank you all for checking out this series in this video. More to come and until next time, 